Okay, um, in the next part of the lecture, I am going to uh, explain how we can um, use partial sums to estimate the sum of the infinite alternating series. So th th this part is optional, so it's not going to be uh, tested. Well, so suppose that we have an, a converging alternating series, right? So it is minus one to the power n minus one times bn, and bn has zero limit as, and is non-increasing. So we know from the alternating series test is that our series is um, converging. Well, but then um, in, in practice, very often, uh, certain quantities are represented as sums of infinite series, right? But, uh, and again, in practice, very often we cannot find the closed form for, for the sum. And th th this is actually why series are so, such an important tool in physics and in engineering is because um, just due to some physics laws, certain quantities are just by represented as, as infinite series. But at the same time, uh, that's the, the best way to represent them as, as there is. And we, we can't really, uh, you know, find a simpler expression. So what if we have some alternating series, right? And we want to, we can't really find uh, it some in closed form, but we need it to... It, it means something something uh, well some something in real life something that we are really interested in then um, you know by, by definition the sum of an infinite series is the limit of its partial sums so which makes um, very reasonable to try to estimate to approximate the sum of the infinite series with its partial sums right so what if instead of the sum of the series which is s, we take its partial sum SM, how good it is an approximation. So the difference between the actual value of the uh, infinite series and this partial sum is called the, the error of approximation. And the idea is that uh, how can we, can we estimate the error, right? And basically, if you um, express the error in terms of the, this um, um elements of the series you will get the this um the this um expression right so notice that here bm plus 2 minus bm plus 3 is non uh, negative bm plus 4 minus bm plus 5 is non negative and so on right so which means that this whole thing so th this whole thing is what is bm plus 1 and we subtract some some things from it right so this this whole thing is going to be less than bm plus one. At the same time, the, this whole thing is still going to be positive. Well, non-negative. Why is that so? It's because this is positive, right? So this is positive, this is positive, and so on. So the, this whole thing is somewhere between zero and bm plus one. So, and I'm um, applying the, um, the absolute value, we see that the absolute value of the error, so the error itself can be positive or negative, right? So because when we use a partial sum to estimate our series, we don't know whether the partial sum is bigger or smaller than the actual, um, the, the, the sum of the entire series. But the absolute value of the error is less than or equal than the next term, the, the first unused term, basically. That, that's what, what we see. and. Here is how we can apply. I mean, this, this is an illustration and it, it, it kind of works, right? So why why, why did this so? So for example, if you look at S5 uh, minus S, right? So S5 minus S is here. And B6 is, is here. So B6 is bigger. Well, um, now, in this exercise, we have already shown that the sum of this, the, the, the series converges. So its sum is some, some number S. We don't know that that number. Yeah, but the question is, what if we want to find that number with, say, I don't know, 
certain precision. So what if we want to compute it to make sure that we got at least three decimal places right, something like that. And specifically, so here there are two parts. So um, estimate the error of um, S6, this part A, and in, in part B, how many terms of the series do we need to take so that to, to guarantee that the remainder is less than one uh, over 1,000? Okay, so let me go through these uh, two parts. So remember that our series was um, our series was minus one to the power n minus one, I think, times n over n square plus one, right? Or n to the n. It doesn't doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything <laughs> from one to infinity. Right, so um, R6 is the error um, of the approximation with uh, the sixth sum. And we know that the sixth error is less than or equal than B7. Okay, so we should take this and uh, plug in 7 for N. So B7 is going to be 7 divided by 7 squared plus 1, which is 7 over 50, which is, I think, one point four yeah no stop it's zero <laughs> zero point fourteen yeah <laughs> ten ten times mistake okay zero point fourteen all right um how about the, the, the say, yeah, so the, this is, um, yeah, the, this is the printed version and it is consistent with uh, what I just wrote. So how about um, what should N be so that the error is less than one over 1000, right? So, and again, so our um, BN is N over N square plus one. So we are looking for n. Such that the next term is less than 1 over 1000. Such that um, n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 squared plus 1 is less than 1 over 1000. All right. So now let me simplify this. So simplifying this, I will get 1,000. I'm going to multiply it by 1,000 times n, square, n plus 1 squared plus 1. So the left-hand side is going to be plus 1,000 is less than n plus 1 squared is n squared plus 2n plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so now let me move everything to the left-hand side. So this is going to be 0 less than n squared plus well, or minus rather, minus 998n, minus 998, all right. Or I can actually, for me, it's more convenient to, to write it like this. So th th this is bigger than zero. Okay, uh, now, how can I solve the, this inequality? Um, basically, the left-hand side of the, this inequality is a quadratic function in N. So if you plot its graph um, on the axis, I mean, if this is Y or whatever, so this is like Y and then it looks like a parabola and it is concave uh, upward because the coefficient at N square is positive. And we are looking for the part where it is positive, right? And we are looking for sufficiently large value of N where it is positive, so which means that we are looking for this part, and basically, as long as my n is bigger than the uh, well n intercept here, it is going to work. So we need to find the intercepts, right? So um, so basically, we need to equate it to zero um, and solve the qu quadratic equation. So n square minus nine nine eight n minus nine nine eight should be equal to zero. So n is, is 998 plus minus square root of, well, basically 99, 
8 squared plus 4 times 998 over 2. Well, we're looking, so there are two, two zeros here. So we're looking for the one that is bigger. So we're looking for the positive sign here. And again, so my n is not really that number, but n should be bigger than that number. And n should be an integer. So what I can do, I can just take the next integer that is bigger than this number. Well, and you, you can just, um, you know, use a calculator to do it. So here is what I, I did. So the, this is my expression. And it is basically 19, 998 point something 999 and whatever. So the next integer that is bigger than the, this number is just 999. So basically n is bigger than 999. And that's the answer, right? So now, so notice that we are, the, the question was to, to find some, some n. So actually any n that is bigger than 999 is going to work, right? So for example, you know, if you use say R1234, it is also going to work, right? So because, you know, it's <laughs> um, B, with that index it's, it's still going to be smaller than than than, than what we are looking for well um, so here is the printed solution it is slightly different so here they are not going to they are not solving the quadratic inequality so i personally find that a quadratic inequality is not really hard to solve so it's probably just you, you can just do it so but they, they are not solving it and instead they're trying to, to to introduce some estimates so i don't know which method to solve it is easier for you, but yeah, you 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 can check check this out too. All right, um, so that's basically it. So that's the end of part eight of the lecture.